Here are some interesting things you may not know about the Mexican-American War. In 1848, Mexico and America signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo which ended the Mexican-American War and gave America the current states of California, Utah, Nevada, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, and Arizona. The war lasted only two years, however, the violence started even before then. The hostilities began in 1835. A war erupted between Mexico and Texan rebels, a war in which the Battle of the Alamo was fought. This violence between Americans and Mexico which began in 1835, and lasted until 1848, can be seen as both a revolt and as a war of empire. The Mexican-American War changed the slavery debate. It almost doubled the size of the United States and began a debate, between Northerners and Southerners, over what to do with the newly acquired land. The Mexican-American War, also known in the United States as the Mexican War and in Mexico as the U.S. intervention in Mexico, was an armed conflict between the United States and Mexico from 1846 to 1848. It followed the 1845 U.S. annexation of Texas, which Mexico still considered Mexican territory since the government did not recognize the Velasco Treaty signed by Mexican General Antonio López de Santa Anna when he was a prisoner of the Texian army during the 1836 Texas Revolution. The Republic of Texas was de facto an independent country, but most of its citizens wished to be annexed by the United States. Domestic sectional politics in the U.S. were preventing annexation since Texas would have been a slave state, upsetting the balance of power between northern free states and southern slave states. In the 1844 United States presidential election, Democrat James K. Polk was elected on a platform of expanding U.S. territory in Oregon and Texas. Polk advocated expansion by either peaceful means or by armed force with the 1845 annexation of Texas furthering that goal by peaceful means. For Mexico, this was a provocation, but Polk went further, sending the U.S. Army troops to the area. He also sent a diplomatic mission to Mexico to try to negotiate the sale of territory. U.S. troops' presence was provocative and designed to lure Mexico into starting the conflict, putting the onus on Mexico and allowing Polk to argue to Congress that a declaration of war should be issued. Mexican forces attacked U.S. forces, and the United States Congress declared war. The Mexican army emerged from the War of Independence as a weak and divided force. Only seven of the 19 states that formed the Mexican Federation sent soldiers, armament, and money for the war effort, as the young republic had not yet developed a sense of a unifying, national identity. Mexican soldiers were not easily melded into an effective fighting force. Santa Ana said the leaders of the army did their best to train the rough men who volunteered, but they could do little to inspire them with patriotism for the glorious country they were honored to serve. According to the leading Mexican conservative politician, Lucas Alamorn, the money spent on arming Mexican troops merely enabled them to fight each other and give the illusion that the country possessed an army for its defense. However, an officer criticized Santa Ana's training of troops the cavalry was drilled only in regiments. The artillery hardly ever maneuvered and never fired a blank shot. The general in command was never present on the field of maneuvers, so that he was unable to appreciate the respective qualities of the various bodies under his command. If any meetings of the principal commanding officers were held to discuss the operations of the campaign, it was not known, nor was it known whether any plan of campaign had been formed. At the beginning of the war, Mexican forces were divided between the permanents and the active militiamen. The permanent forces consisted of 12 regiments of infantry, of two battalions each, three brigades of artillery, eight regiments of cavalry, one separate squadron and a brigade of dragoons. The militia amounted to nine infantry and six cavalry regiments. In the northern territories, presidial companies protected the scattered settlements. Since Mexico fought the war on its home territory, a traditional support system for troops were women, known as, soldaderas. They did not participate in conventional fighting on battlefields, but some, soldaderas, joined the battle alongside the men. These women were involved in fighting during the defense of Mexico City and Monterrey. Some women such as Dos Amans and Maria Josefa Zozaya would be remembered as heroes. 
When war broke out against Mexico in May 1846, the United States Army numbered a mere 8,000, but soon 60,000 volunteers joined their ranks. The American Navy dominated the sea. The American government provided stable, capable leadership. The economy of the expanding United States far surpassed that of the fledgling Mexican state. Morale was on the American side. The war was a rout. Polk directed the war from Washington, D.C. He sent a four-prong attack into the Mexican heartland. John Fremont and Stephen Kearney were sent to control the coveted lands of California and New Mexico. Fremont led a group of zealous Californians to declare independence even before word of hostilities reached the West. The Bear Flag Republic was not taken seriously, but Fremont and his followers did march to Monterey to capture the Mexican Presidio, or fort. By 1847, California was secure. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.